I think that your pastor has a very good memory. <laughs> I guess it's an honor that in 1984, when he heard me preach, that I messed up so much he remembered me. <laughs> I first pulled the notes out for my message this afternoon. But uh, if you would turn in your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter number 5. And while you're turning there, let me just say just a few things about myself. I want you to know a little bit about who is preaching to you today. As the preacher mentioned, I do have six children. Three sons and three daughters. My children all serve the Lord. They all believe the Word of God. And if you want to raise your family for God, then you have to decide to do it on purpose. God has given me 26 grandchildren. <laughs> the oldest is 20, the youngest is one year. <laughs> the goal is for all 26 of my grandchildren to grow up, get saved, and give their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> In order for that to happen, I want I want God to let me live long enough so that I will see all of that happen. Since I am 70 now, I'll have to be about 90 before all of that takes place. <laughs> if you are here today and have any children, and if you want to raise them for the Lord, then you have to do it on purpose. Your children know whether you are real or whether you are a fake. And if you are not a genuine Christian, your children will see it and they will never live for God if you are not real. Many preachers think they're a success if they pastor a big church. But success, as far as God is concerned, is that a man be found faithful. God knows whether you're faithful or not, and so do your children. I believe that if a pastor raises children that love God, that is success in God's eyes. I believe that if you raise children that love God, that is success in God's eyes. In Genesis chapter 5, I want to read verses 18 through 24. And 
I will read it in English and then my friend will read it in Korean. And Jared lived 162 years and he begat Enoch. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 962 years and he died. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Amen. When I was a little boy, about seven or eight years old, I got home from school one day and heard some noise out in the pig pen area. 제가 이제 일곱 살, 여덟 살쯤에 제가 이제 학교에서 집에 들어와가지고 우리 이제 돼지고기에서 무슨 소리가 들려가지고 한번 가봤습니다. Being very curious, I wanted to go see what was going on. 되게 저는 궁금증이 많아가지고 무슨 일이 있는지 가서 보고 싶었습니다. So I ran out to the fence that was by the pig pen and saw my dad's footprints that went out to the pig pen. 그러니까 저는 이제 우리 그 돼지고기로 나가는 그 우리 그 it was very muddy, and my dad left very deep footprints. Being just a small boy, I thought I could get out to the pig pen if I stepped in my dad's footprints. So I put one foot in and then stretched way out and put the other foot in the next breath breath. And I got stuck. <laughs> I was trying to walk in my dad's footprints. He was putting the rings in the pig's noses and that's why they were making the noise. But the point I wanted to make is I was trying to walk in the footsteps of my daddy. In the passage of scripture we read, when Enoch was 65 years old, he began, he had a little boy and his name was Methuselah. It's very interesting to me that the Bible tells us about three people that walked with God. One was Levi, one was Noah, and the other was Enoch. One was Levi. 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 Okay. Um, wouldn't it be great if God were going to write more of the Bible? He will not, but if he were, wouldn't it be great if your name was there as number four? What does it mean to walk with God? There is a Greek word called parapateo. In English, it sounds like a pair or two potatoes. Uh, para means tread or walk. 
파라라는 것은 걷는다는 뜻이고요. Pateo means around. Pateo는 주변이라는 뜻입니다. Or walk around with God all the time. 하나님과 함께 주변을 항상 걷는다는 뜻이죠. We need to have God included in every area of our life. God needs to be included in all of our pleasure. God needs to be included in everything we do in business. God should be the center of all of our education. God needs to be in the center of all of our work. God needs to be in the center of all of our personal life, the things we do in secret. And God needs to be the center of raising our children. If God is worth anything at all, He is worth everything. The Bible never does say, Seek ye second the kingdom of God. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God never does say that he wants most of our heart. He says in Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. The Bible says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul wrote that before anyone had insurance. <laughs> Paul wrote that before there were any government programs to help us. Paul lived by faith in God. And that's what God wants us to do today, to live by faith in God. I know God can take care of us. He took care of me early in my ministry. When I first started pastoring in 1969, I took a church in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. There were only six people in the church. Only one of them had a job. I was 22 years old. They agreed to pay me $10 a week. I couldn't live on $10 a week. So I put $5 a week back in the offering. I had to trust God to meet my needs. Some people think everyone in America is rich. But I wasn't one of them. I had to trust God. I remember one time I had been out knocking on doors telling people about Jesus. <laughs> and I came back home and went in the house and my wife said, there's no more food. I said, oh, and I went in the kitchen to look. There was a little bit of salt in a salt shaker and a little bit of pepper in a pepper shaker. And we had an oatmeal container with about that much oatmeal in it. And that was all the food there was in the whole house. 
I went to my wife and I said, sweetheart, I'll take care of it. I didn't have any money. So I went to my little office where I had a chair. I knelt down on my knees. And I laid my Bible down. And I prayed to God. I said, God, you have got to take care of me. My children need food. My wife needs food. Oh, God, you have got to take care of me. And, and I prayed until I got peace with God. I got up off of my knees and went in and gave my wife a hug. I said, everything's going to be okay. God has given me peace. And in less than two hours, a pickup truck pulled into our driveway. And the whole back end of the truck was filled full of food. And they brought the food into my house and filled my kitchen full of food. Just two hours after I prayed. I know God is real. He took care of me. And he takes care of me today. Today, Christians depend on all kinds of things in the world rather than God. If you know Jesus as your Savior and you have him in your heart, then you need to start depending upon God. God is a real God, and I can tell you many, many, many illustrations of how God has supplied for me over the years. It's very interesting that the more you walk with God, the more you become like God. So, the Bible says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Have you ever noticed people that have been married to each other for many, many years? They start liking the same food. They start liking the same things in life. The more they're together, the more they're alike. When you start walking with God, you will become more like Jesus in everything you do. You'll start thinking like God thinks. You'll start liking the things that God likes. You'll start acting like God would act. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if when people talked about you that they say, that person reminds me of Jesus Christ. Would anyone make that mistake in looking at you? Do you remind anybody of Jesus? Why is it that many people in the world say they don't want to be a Christian because they have met too many hypocrites? People are looking for somebody that are that is genuine today, somebody that is real. I was in Mongolia the other day. 
And I was at a market and wanted to buy a belt. Uh, to help hold my trousers up, of course. <laughs> and I wanted genuine leather. I didn't want fake leather. I didn't want anything that was imitation. So I said, is this genuine leather? People are looking for genuine Christians. Are you genuine? Are you real? I want you to see in this passage of scripture of when Enoch started walking with God. It says that Enoch was 65 years old and then he had a little baby. He, I can imagine, held that little baby in his hands and he says, wow, I have got to raise this little boy in the nurture and admonition of God. <laughs> and in order to do that, I better start walking with God. And it says that Enoch walked with God for 300 years. Day after day after day after day after day for 300 years. He didn't walk with God for a couple of weeks and then backslide for a couple of weeks. He was faithful day in and day out, day after day for 300 years. Are you a Christian today? Do you have Christ in your heart? Do your children recognize that you are walking with God? Do your neighbors know whether you are walking with God or not? Are you genuine or are you real? I remember when my oldest daughter was a little baby. I brought her from home from the hospital and took her out of the little thing and laid her on the bed beside my wife. And I knelt down beside the bed. I put one hand on my little daughter and then held my wife's hand. And I prayed and I said, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I have got to have your help to raise this little girl. God, would you help me to raise her up to love you? The Lord, somewhere in this world, there's probably a little ugly boy. And my daughter's going to grow up and fall in love with him. Would you put a hedge about him to protect him? And help him to be a pure young man when my daughter meets him. Help me to keep my daughter pure also. And help her to grow up and love you. Today that little girl is a preacher's wife in a town called Lawrence, Kansas. They have eight children. And they all love the Lord. I am so blessed. But that little girl did not grow up and love God accidentally. Mm. 
That was a daily thing, day after day after day after day, raising her for the Lord Jesus. It, it is not easy to walk with God consistently. Sometimes you have to stand alone if you're walking with God. But when Enoch started walking with God, he laid aside all malice. He laid aside all guile. He laid aside all hypocrisy. He laid aside all envy and evil speaking. And he put on love and joy. And peace and long suffering. And gentleness and goodness and faith. And meekness and temperance. When we become Christians, we are supposed to walk in newness of life. Old things pass away and everything becomes new. We are to walk in honesty and good works and in love and in wisdom and in truth. We need to walk with God all of our life and then when you get to the place in your life Sometimes you're going to need God. Whenever you call upon Him, He will be near. Everyone has burdens. Everyone has problems. If we had time today, we could start with this gentleman over here and go through everyone in the audience and you could all tell me about problems that you have. 만약 시간이 있었다면 여기서 시작해가지고 쭉 무슨 문제가 있는지 무슨 고민이 있는지 다 풀어볼 수도 있을 것 같습니다. And when you have a problem, you need a God that will be close to you. 그리고 문제가 있을 때 그리고 고민이 있을 때는 하나님이 곁에 있으면 그게 필요한 것이죠. A couple of years ago, I had a problem. 한 2년 전에 전 저도 큰 문제가 있었습니다. I was carrying a burden very heavily. 아주 큰 짐을 무거운 짐을 I was driving down an interstate highway in the United States. And I was weeping, tears coming down my face. And I said, Oh God, I need your help. Oh God, please help me. Lord, I need you and I need you now. And right at that moment, my telephone rang. This was in 2015. I pulled over to the side of the road. I looked at my telephone and it said the call was from North Carolina. I didn't know anyone in North Carolina. But I answered the phone and the man said, this is Jack Shope. He said, do you know me? And I said, no. And he said, well, Brother Bob in 1969, you came to my house. And knocked on my door. He told me about Jesus and I got saved. And you took, you took me out and you showed me how to win the people to Christ. And he said, I've been doing it ever since. 
And I wanted to call you and say thank you. And uh, I was weeping again. And I said, I'll call you back later when I can talk better. And I hung up the telephone. The, uh, it's very interesting that in 1969, I led him to Christ. He never had written me a letter and said thank you. He never had come by to see me and said thank you. He never called me on the telephone and said thank you. But in 46 years before that, he never had called me, but he called me that day when I prayed. Let me tell you something. You begin to walk with God, and God will help you when you're in trouble. You walk with God, and God will meet your needs when you need Him. I'd like to ask you, are you walking with God? Is God real to you? If you're born again, if you're already saved, if you are born again and you're already saved, then you may need to get closer to God. If you are not born again, you need to have Jesus in your heart. Could we have every head bowed? Let me ask you, if you are a Christian, you know the Lord is your Savior, you know you're going to heaven, but you need to be closer to God so that God is personal to you. Would you raise your hand for prayer? God bless each of you that have raised your hand. Now let me ask you this. If you were to die right now and you don't know whether you're going to heaven or not, would you raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. Let's all stand with our heads bowed, please. Our Heavenly Father, I ask you please to meet the needs of thy people today. All of the people that raise their hands need your help. Oh God, would you meet their needs? You say that if we draw nigh to you, you'll draw nigh to us. Help us to take that step and draw close to you. Lord Jesus, those that raise their hands and are not sure they're going to heaven, would you help them to get that answered today? And while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, and as the pianist plays, if you raise your hand, you need to come and pray about something. You just say, excuse me, if anybody's in the way, come up to the front and kneel and pray and talk to God. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, then you come up and take the preacher's hand and 
tell him that you need to know if you're going to heaven and he'll show you or have somebody show you how you can get that taken care of today so you'll know you're going to heaven by the time you leave today. 오늘 기도하실 분들 앞에 나와가지고 지금 고개 숙이신 채로 그리고 운동 방식 제가 앞에 나오셔서 기도해 주시고요. 그리고 천국의 확신이 아직 없으신 분들은 목사님의 손을 잡고 그거에 대해서 꼭 물어보세요. 기도해 주시겠습니다. But God speaking to you, just say excuse me, you just come. You do what God wants. Be obedient to the Holy Spirit of God today. If He's speaking to your heart, you come and spend some time at the altar and pray and talk to God and get that need met in your life. You raise your hand, you're not sure you're going to heaven. Won't you slip out? Won't you come to the front? We'll show you how you can get saved. Would you do that? Would you come? Just say, excuse me, if somebody's in the way, and you come on, and we'll show you how to get Christ in your heart. We'll be real to you. Would you do that? It takes a lot of courage to come to the altar and get things taken care of. Would you do what God asked you to do? But a 300 year walk begins with that first step of faith. And you can do that. And then you take the next step. I appreciate that, Master Brother. It's, it's uh, you know, one of, one of the wonderful things about the Christian life is, is uh, you get to look at some who have been walking with the Lord for many years. And uh, I appreciate, uh, appreciate Brother Charles' testimony. Uh, we're going to close in prayer, but let me say, if you uh, uh, are unsure about your salvation, uh, you can come and speak to me or, or uh, one of the uh, uh, ladies or men in our church if you're uncertain, and uh, we can show you how you can know for sure that there's a place for you in heaven before you leave this world. Amen. 오늘 진짜 많이 구원에 확신이 없으신 분들이 계신다면 
이 목사님입니다. 아니면 이 형제 자매들에게 물어보시가지고 꼭 그것은 오늘 문 떠나시기 전에 그건 말씀해 드릴 수 있습니다. We could do it even as we share lunch together upstairs. So please uh, don't feel like you need to run off. There's uh, a lunch upstairs, and then we'll have a service again at 2 o'clock, and Brother Petra will be preaching to us one more time. I'd like to ask Brother Kim Jin up if he would close us in.